the window transformation from a old 1962 timber window to a timber window kitchen to outdoor extravaganza. We have to raise the bottom a little bit because it's currently too low for a kitchen bench top. And the middle is going to lift up like a hatch that allows stuff to be passed from the kitchen to the outdoor area. And the first step of this journey is to cut the window out. So we need the plastic. Oh dear, everything all right? One less window for the greenhouse. Oh, this can be your ventilation uh, window. <laughs> all right. One nail in your corner, eh? Right? Can use the box? Oh, there we go. So, not only does the window need to be rebuilt to a different size, we're also raising the top. The problem with having a hatch at this height is that by the time you have the frame and the sash and everything, you're probably going to hit your head on the open sash as it's tilted up. So, we're raising the lintel, but the fun part is transferring all the roof weight that is currently sitting on the lintel so we can move it. Did you put your life in the hands of this propping system, Raymond? Yeah, I'm full confidence. I like your style. Not based on anything, but I'm confident. Unearned confidence. That's what makes the world go around. Naive confidence. Okay, so what we have here is the beam, the lintel, sitting on our studs over here, and they're kind of notched in. And then we've got all this roof weight. So all those props are supporting the roof weight that's coming down in a series of struts and a brace coming back it's all coming down onto this lintel so we've hopefully transferred that weight because Raymond uh, put some props on the inside down to our feet and then those you see it there and then the prop carries on down to the deck we take the beam out and then we figure out how to put it in its new position That's Let's go. There we go. Yep, keep going. These high lift jacks are amazing, right? Yeah. Look at that.
search on the roll with your fingernails. So I spent a bit of time last night repairing some of these facings. They were cracked and broken off and in the case of this one here, a whole, whoop, a whole chunk had broken off. So I've glued this piece on, I just need to cut it to shape. You gotta be careful with this stuff. See all that orange paint there? That's actually lead paint. And I think some of the, some of the white coats on top of it are probably lead paint as well. So the, the red stuff in particular is pretty nasty. Very high concentration of lead. That's what they used to use to protect the timber from moisture before they realized that it's very bad for your health. So the bottom of this window is going to be very important height wise because the kitchen bench is going to go into the window. So it'll be kind of flowing out, then the sash opens and so it's crucial that I have it at the right height. This is the common discovery. When it comes to, if you're wondering what this is, this is our fiber internet. They did a highly professional job of running it into our house. We will sort that out in the future, but um, this here we need to sort out now. This is rot, and it's typically found in the corner of windows like this, the bottom corners. That's because if you don't maintain timber windows properly, they can open up and gaps can allow water to come into the window. You know, water coming into places isn't a problem if it can dry out, but trapped inside a wall like this, it's got nowhere to dry out. So this is what it does. Before we bought the house, someone must have patched up the window because there's no gaps, but all they did was patch up the window and leave all this inside here. <sighs> Should really have a mask on. So we need to do something about that, and I'll show you what we'll do before this video is over to prevent this ever happening again. Oh, come on. This would have been a lot easier if I'd noticed it yesterday. First bit of rot we found, Jess. Yeah, which I think is pretty good. Not the rot, but the fact that this is the first part we've found. Yeah. The house has honestly been in fairly good condition, I think. I think so, yeah. It's all those toxic chemicals, you know, preserving it. <laughs> so crazy that the wall was essentially these weatherboards, this gap, and then Jim. No insulation. No insulation. This is sort of a last resort covering, so if water ever gets in there again, it doesn't rot away the timber, but we do need to do a bit more than that. <laughs> it's 
not my day today. I just whacked that in full bore without even checking the width of it. It is 10 mil wider than all the other studs. I chewed up the installation with my planer. No. It's completely jammed. Oh, Done. Press stud. No rot. Uh, if you go to that end, make sure it doesn't fall off. And I'll tap this in here. Ah. You okay? Fuck that hurt. So although Ray and I got a lot done yesterday, in our haste, I think I overlooked the stud. And that's how I missed the, you know, picking up the fact that it was rotten. I think that's how I missed it. So sometimes it doesn't pay to work extra fast. But we're on the straight road now, Jess. Don't be too hard on yourself. You wanna have a go with the nail gun? Sure. Two nails in there. You're trying to go into, into there. So like that? Yep. 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 Yeah. Oh no, it's split! Yeah, that's weird. Oh, that's the timber's fault, not yours. Yeah, timber. And then this side is going to be a bit tougher. It keeps breaking, am I doing it wrong? Oh, no, that's right. That one's split again. Jesus. How would it do that? There's a knot there, it might be that. But I'm not sure. <laughs> Jesus, broke the head off it. Can you pass me the nips over there, the red ones? I don't like these, this is my favourite too. Doing some see if I can actually. Hmm, why not? Ooh. Well, you try, you're stronger than I am. Broke it clean off. You'll be here, passing your drinks and your food out to your friends. Exactly. Chocolate on the Barbie Scott. <laughs> this is how we talk to each other. This is how we talk. <laughs> Really shouldn't nail the top of weatherboards, but people always do it because it's easier. We always just nail the bottom of weatherboards because a weatherboard will expand and contract, you know, with moisture. It'll get wider, it'll get skinnier. And if you have two nailing points, you've got two things fighting each other as the board's getting a bit wider and skinnier, and then it cracks. If you only have one nailing point, then the weatherboard is free to expand and contract. So only nail the bottom of the weatherboard and don't nail it into the weatherboard below because then again you're gonna make the weatherboard below have two nail points so in order to prevent the moisture damage that we had before you have to do a number of things this is like the final the last resort i would say in a perfect world we'd be ripping all the weatherboards off and putting paper cleanly over the studs but we don't live in that kind of world okay please cheer for me in the comments below so I know that you're, you think I can do this. I think people will just be so excited to see such premium content. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you subscribe. <laughs> Moments like this. If you enjoy me putting this red button in the billboards, please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Exactly. Believe it or not, this is the moment you're waiting for. Look. What an exciting development. We have paper behind. Well done. Somewhat. I wanted to get this paper just to protect the corner of the framing. But that isn't the last thing that protects that framing. So, we put this on here. And that is to protect the next thing that we put on. Okay. Is it this? 
Uh, no, it's similar to that, but it's heavier and it's white. <laughs> no, similar to that, but oh, it's God. wider. <laughs> it's wider. No, no, no. Wider than that. I swear to God, if you say similar to this. I forgot about the van. Oh, great. Oh, I see. See? Just wider. It's the same thing. So the orange thing protects the internal corner of the flashing tape. Without the orange thing, uh, it would be easier for the flashing tape to break at that corner. I lost a spray apple. Maybe we'll love a good yoga. It's so little. Oh, look at the tiny one coming down the track. Maybe right. The thread. Oh, oh my god. Oh, this is cool. cute. Because the wicker feeds the baby the processed food of the human. <laughs> it's a new dawn, it's a new day. And Ray has returned. Hi Ray. Hi. Ray is going to be the window repairman. Well, I finish the sill, ready for the window. So, uh, putting a square on here kind of shows you what I need to do. So I need to put timber to support the window and the void between this square and this window here is kind of the shape of the timber I need over here. This is a moment where the sash determines the length of all these verticals. And we just got to trim that by around about 120 mil. So that there. Yeah. So Jess, that part was uh, cracked in half and rotten at the bottom. Uh, and he fixed it. Man, well he made that out of old Remo. Yeah. Wow. Just ask the universe and the universe provided. Uh, grand ideas for this week. I thought, yeah, I'll be able to pop that window out, reframe the opening, pop it back in, then what, then I could probably film another video and that will be this week's video and then I can save this footage for when uh, the sashes arrive and then you can see the whole window come to... It's not happening. I've still got to get the window together and finish what I'm doing here. It's taking longer than I thought. And I've still got to edit a video this week. Sometimes I feel like this big room here is a renovation all in itself, all on its own. Feels like I'm doing a whole house renovation in one room. That's just because there's so many things in this room that needed to be done. And it feels like it's taken forever. Which is frustrating because obviously I don't want to keep making videos about the same room for the rest of my life. It's also frustrating to do because you just want to move on to the next thing, right? All this framing, all this weatherboards, I've been doing this for what feels like months. So I really want to get onto the plasterboard and the finishing timber and building the cabinets and all that kind of stuff. But there's so many of these little jobs to do. And there's only me 
and of course Ray when he helps me a couple of days a week um, and and Jess when she can help me as well so it's been a lot of adjustment um, you know I'm used to doing full renovations inside 30 videos now all of a sudden you know how many videos are we in now where my house still looks like this <laughs> anyway that, that's that's what I think of as I'm doing these jobs and I'm thinking about the editing I got to do and I really appreciate that I can do this and I really appreciate that you guys watch my videos every week and show up every week and I try to make as entertaining videos as I can so bear with me as I get to the end of this room and we're getting pretty close now I can feel it the ceiling's coming down this week and the new one's going up but if my judgment's anything to go by that might take two weeks <laughs> but um yeah we're getting there we're getting there should we film this one going on? You probably watched enough going on. Ah, what's one more, eh? They say you don't need to do pilot holes with these screws, but I just don't like the idea of it, right? Put in a screw and then it all splits. And this old dry remo, very prone to splitting. Just do a little bit extra. Maybe that's why it's taking so long. <laughs> you are fussy. <laughs> but I think that's one of your best qualities. Oh, thank This little block of wood on the top here that I'm adding on is to support the future window. See if I don't add this on and I screw hinges to the top here and then we put gas struts on this window to make it open up, all that pressure is going to be pulling on these hinges and if we're only in 20 mil of timber it could rip them right out. MVP of the show here. The silver tray. So the tray goes in there. It's got a little upstand there. It's got a lip here. And the window will sit on that, but with a packer. If uh, we slack off on the maintenance and water ever gets through the window, it'll hit this tray and roll right out. And if the tray somehow fails, it's got this protective tape over the timber to stop the water eating away at the stud like it did last time. Nice! Just got to nail this on and then, um, man, we're ready to put the window back in. Okay, so we're going to go down like this. Because that can't. Slowly. Slowly. I have to spin it. No, it's okay. And then you go back towards where we started. bit wonky it probably needs to be straightened up a little bit Does it? but I think that's more or less it I can't visualize things that aren't right in front of me well it's right in front of you yeah but I mean like <laughs> I mean I can't imagine what it was like beforehand 
<laughs> so I'm not kind of like, yeah, well, it's totally different. Can't remember it. Well, lucky for you, we record everything, so you just got to rewind the video. It's actually very useful for me. Sometimes I struggle to think if anything's changed. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Look at it. Yeah, yeah. But um, and then I see the old footage. It's like, oh, that's right. And we've got a nice even gap under there for the water to drain out. But I've obviously got to fix it off nice and level and secure it properly. But that is for another exciting episode. Well done. We got there in the end. It was a struggle. Mm, I know. But we did it together. Well, we did bits of it together. We did the journey. You did most of it yourself. We get a visitor just after we pull the, the big window in. It's all right. We managed. It wasn't that heavy. Hey, Bruce. Oh, I didn't even get to see Jess on the saw. <laughs> I was not on the saw. Yeah. <laughs>